guys, this is John Watts. I'm a consumer protection lawyer, and we're starting a new series of videos where we go over the text of the FDCPA, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And I want to do this for a couple reasons. One, I did this uh, maybe two years ago, but I think I have a more effective way of doing it, so I wanted to redo those. And second, we have some really amazing changes coming probably at the end of November of 2021. Now, this will mainly deal with the communication. So how does a debt collector leave a voicemail? Can they send you a text? Can they send you a Facebook messenger? What can they do with social media? Those new rules should come in the end of November, but to really understand them, you have to have a good foundation of the rules that have been around since the 70s, okay? And that's the FDCPA. So we'll just take a section at a time and go through it and you'll notice on one half of the screen the left side of the screen we'll have the text and then the right hand side we'll have some questions and the reason i want to do it that way is so that it will help you to better understand what we're learning here now i realize this won't appeal to everybody and it may not appeal to many people at all but if you're really deeply interested in understanding about the fdcpa then I think that this will be very much worth your time. And uh, as always, give me feedback, you know, questions, comments, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to look at 15 USC section 1692. Now, this may seem like a kind of a minor point, but the what, what we often see people do is they don't know how to properly cite this. So they'll say section 1692, and they'll put paren A. And what they really mean is 1692A with no parentheses. And the reason is this opening section tells us what's going on. And you'll notice that, for example, it's parentheses A. 1692A with no parentheses is a totally different section. That's actually what we'll cover next. So it's 1692, 1692A, 1692B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. And... Uh, so anyway, I just want you to understand how it's properly cited because it, it confuses a lot of people. All right. So this tells us why in the world does the FDCPA around. So let's just look at the text over here. And then on the right hand side, we've got some questions. Just to make sure we're understanding this. So abusive practices. There's abundant evidence of the use of abusive, deceptive and unfair debt collection practices by many debt collectors. Abusive debt collection practices contribute to, and then it gives us some things here, personal bankruptcies, marital instability, loss of jobs, invasions of individual privacy. So let's come over here. So is this a widespread problem or is it very rare? Well, Congress tells us there's abundant evidence by many debt collectors. So this is not an isolated thing. A lot of times debt collectors like to say, judge, I mean, it's so rare to have a violate. No, that's not what Congress found. And they haven't changed it in the all the years since then. And then notice what we have here, the abusive, deceptive, and unfair listed over here. This will make up the core of sort of the original FDCPA that we're still under right now. So there'll be a section on abusive or harassing debt collection. Then there'll be a section on deceptive or misleading misrepresentations then there'll be a section on unfair conduct so they're telling us at the beginning look we find there's abusive deceptive unfair and then later we'll see in a section 1692d for abusive and 1692e for misrepresentation or deception and 1692f for unfair conduct and then again we have a question so is this a big deal or no big deal well, Congress tells us it's a very big deal. And so what are the four bad consequences? Well, it's right here in red. Personal bankruptcies, marital instability, loss of jobs, invasion of individual privacy. So that's what Congress says. This is what we found is happening right now. So now let's look at the next three sections. So again, this will be 1692 B, C, and D. So inadequacy of laws, existing laws and procedures for redressing or fixing these injuries are inadequate to protect consumers. Section C, 
available non-abusive methods, means other than misrepresentation or other abusive debt collection practices are available for the effective collection of debts. And then this last part's on interstate commerce. And this has a substantial extent in interstate commerce. And even when it's purely intrastate, that means just within one state, like just within Alabama. They nevertheless directly affect interstate commerce. So let's look at our questions over here. So Congress tells us why they did not just leave the existing laws alone. Because some states have laws. Now, frankly, Alabama does not. But why didn't they just leave the, the laws alone? Well, they say right here, they're inadequate. They're not protecting consumers. That's the point of the FDCPA is to protect consumers. Now, we'll see a few other reasons why the FDCPA was passed. But fundamentally, it's to protect consumers and the existing laws were inadequate. And then here's something that debt collectors sometimes try and argue in a subtle way to judges. You know, so the question is, don't debt collectors have to be deceptive and abusive to be able to collect money effectively? They'll say, judge, I mean, we've got too many restrictions on us. There's no way we can collect the laws. I mean, sometimes you got to cut some corners. You know, you got to you got to bump into some people here. Well, it's not what Congress says. Means other than these abusive debt collection practices are available for the effective collection of debts. So yeah, you can always kick down somebody's door and shoot them in the leg with a shotgun. That's really good at getting paid because people will be terrified of it. But we don't have to do that. We can do non-abusive. We can do fair debt collection where we're not lying to people. That is possible. And then what's this deal about interstate commerce? Okay, and, and you may be familiar with that term. It comes from the Interstate Commerce Clause. So this is Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3 of the Constitution to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribe. That's what our Constitution says. The significance is Congress can only regulate things that are interstate commerce. So what do they do when you have an Alabama debt collector who sends a letter that never leaves, leaves Alabama and it goes to a consumer in Alabama. They go, well, see, Congress can't touch us. No, Congress says right here, we find even if it's all within one state, it directly affects interstate commerce. And almost all collection is using interstate commerce. We're using the telephones, the postal service, credit reporting, things of that nature. All right, so this will be our final section for this video. This is 16I2 paren E. So the purposes. It is the purpose of this subchapter to eliminate abusive debt collection practices by debt collectors, to ensure those debt collectors who refrain from using abusive debt collection practices are not competitively disadvantaged, and to promote consistent state action to protect consumers against debt collection abuses. So what's the main purpose? Not the only purpose, but the main purpose eliminate abusive debt collection practices. Now, when they say abusive, that can be harassing, it can be deceptive, it can be unfair. They're just sort of covering it all by this term of abusive. So that's the idea. How do we stop, eliminate abusive debt collection? But then here's this odd thing. How does the FDCPA protect debt collectors? I thought it was to protect consumers. How does it protect debt collectors? And why is that a good thing? Well, they're saying those debt collectors who do not break the law, we don't want them to be competitively disadvantaged. It's like in a football game. Well, what if we let one team have 13 players on the field? Well, that puts the other team at a disadvantage. And so we're going to penalize the team that breaks the law so that the team that follows the rules is not unfairly disadvantaged. So. It, you can imagine you have two debt collectors and they're trying to get maybe the accounts of a hospital. And debt collector A says, we follow the FDCPA. Debt collector B says, we don't follow that law. If it says give them 30 days, we give them 10. And we'll lie to them and we'll cheat them and we'll threaten them with violence. We'll do all this stuff. Well, if the hospital's like, hey, it sounds like you're going to get more things done. Well, then that debt collector A, who's following the law, this honorable debt collector, is at a disadvantage. They'll go out of business. And then they'll be tempted to start doing what these abusive debt collectors do. So 
We want to protect consumers, but also protect the honorable debt collectors who follow the law. And then the Congress says we want there to be consistent action. So we don't want there to be you know, wildly different standards among the, the different states. So in part two, we'll go over 1692A, and those are the definitions. And I, I put a couple things up on here. You know, a lot of people lose cases because of this. You know, a, a lot of lawyers just go, oh, I'm going to skip the definitions. That's boring. Well, that tells us what's a debt collector. If we don't have a debt collector, we don't have the FDCPA. We could have all sorts of, you know, violations of the FDCPA, but if it's not a debt collector, the FDCPA doesn't apply. We could have a debt collector doing terrible violations of law, but if the debt does not qualify as a covered debt under the FDCPA, none of it matters. So you have to know these basics here. And knowing these basics gives you a great advantage. I did a recent video about when you know the rules of the game better than your opponent, it gives you an unfair advantage. Well, we want an unfair advantage over the collectors because we want to know the rules. They're sort of motivated to not know the rules. So they go, well, we didn't know that was a violation. It doesn't matter. Okay. But they think that that helps them. When we know the rules much better than the collectors do, then we know when they have violated law, when they've not violated the law. And so it's really, really important to get this foundation of the rules. So this first video is why in the world did we pass the FDCPA? But the next video will be that foundation that everything is built on. Everything in the FDCPA is built on the definitions in 1692A. So if you enjoyed this video, just let me know and look for the next video. And I'm not sure how often I'll come out with these. I don't think I'm going to do them just kind of back to back to back to back. But hopefully every couple days we'll come out with these. And uh, definitely let me know your comments, suggestions, mm -hmm. questions. And as always, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. And if you find value in them, you know, if you want to share them with other people, always feel free to do that. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.